As we edge closer to the highly anticipated Starship Flight 12, set for launch in the first quarter of 2026, the spacecraft's hardware is entering its final stages of construction, and excitement is building fast. Lately, Ship 39 has been spotted hanging out in Mega Bay 2, slowly growing taller as more sections get stacked. But the real buzz now centers on its thermal protection system. So, what makes the TPS on Starship version 3 different from version 2? Let's dive in and find out. With the help of some incredible photos captured of Ship 39, we'll start with a close-up shot taken on November 10th. From the looks of it, the surface appears flatter and tiled with metallic panels, likely covering areas such as the payload bay bottom. The tiles themselves are hexagonal, resembling a honeycomb or a bee's nest. This clever shape allows them to fit together seamlessly, creating that satisfying grid pattern you can see in the photo. However, during Flight 10, heat managed to leak between the tiles, scorching the material beneath. To tackle this, SpaceX introduced a new solution called Crunch Wrap. Think of it as a protective wrap, almost like gift paper, covering each tile's sides before robots lock them in place and trim the tops flat. This technique eliminates gaps without relying on old filler materials, like the putty used on the space shuttle, which sometimes detached mid-flight. They tested the crunch wrap system across the entire heat shield during Flight 11, proving it offered tighter seals and stronger durability. And now this same solution continues with Ship 39, which explains why its tiles look so precisely fitted. Most of these tiles are dark gray to black, with a slight glossy sheen. Some areas appear lighter depending on the lighting or wear. They look smooth, but have a subtle texture, almost like ceramic kitchen tiles, but engineered to handle the fiery fury of re-entry. Down the center, there's a vertical strip of metallic-looking tiles, part of SpaceX's ongoing experiments to see if metal tiles could outperform ceramic ones. Unfortunately, during Flight 10, those metallic tiles didn't hold up well. According to Elon Musk, oxidation occurred when the tiles reacted with superheated oxygen during re-entry, leaving orange discoloration on one side of the vehicle. While the ship still achieved an on-target splashdown in the Indian Ocean, the visible damage highlighted the need for further refinement to ensure the system can handle re-entry without compromising reusability. After all, even minor damage or discoloration means time-consuming refurbishment, which goes against SpaceX's goal of making Starship rapidly reusable. For Flight 11, SpaceX dropped the metallic tiles altogether, opting instead to perfect the ceramic ones with improved sealing. But now, with Flight 12, those metal tiles are making a comeback, suggesting that a new, more heat- and oxidation-resistant design is in the works. It's not yet clear exactly how these metallic tiles have been upgraded, but one thing's for sure. Improving their resistance to extreme temperatures and oxidation is likely a top priority. What do you think? Are you excited to see these new tiles in the upcoming flight? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take. Even though erosion remains one of Starship's biggest engineering challenges, its TPS has proven to be impressively capable, especially when pushed to the edge. Flight 11 was all about testing those limits. SpaceX engineers intentionally removed around 72 ceramic tiles across 18 high heat zones to see how the system would handle extreme conditions. To make things even more intense, they left no backup protection underneath exposing bare stainless steel directly to the fiery plasma during re-entry. The goal? To gather critical data that could help develop lighter, more efficient heat shields in the future, possibly ones that don't even require full coverage. SpaceX engineers described it as pushing it to the extreme. It almost felt like they were preparing the audience for a potential rapid, unscheduled disassembly, essentially, they wanted to know how long the ship could endure before catastrophic failure. But in a surprise twist, 
Flight 11 went better than planned. The ship held up incredibly well, proving its resilience under punishing conditions. Yes, there was still some discoloration on the surface, but it was far less severe than what we saw in Flight 10, and likely the result of the intentional tile removal, as expected. Post-flight analysis revealed something fascinating. Starship is remarkably tough, even when damaged. So far, every Starship that's attempted re-entry without losing control has survived it. That includes test vehicles with first-generation shields that had flaps coming apart, as well as ones missing large sections of heat tiles. None of them came through unscathed, but every single one made it through re-entry. What's more impressive is how localized the damage tends to be. Whether the tiles were removed on purpose or lost unintentionally, the damage rarely spreads uncontrollably. Either the intact surrounding TPS acts as a barrier, or the material degrades slowly enough that the ship stays structurally sound until it's back through the atmosphere. This level of resilience opens up huge opportunities for experimentation. It's unfortunate that the metallic tiles didn't quite perform as hoped, but even then, they didn't fail catastrophically. There's a good chance that with new, more advanced alloys, the concept could make a comeback in the future, though that would likely be a longer-term research project. Still, the damage resistance we've seen so far is one of Starship's most impressive qualities. Consider this. The space shuttle was destroyed when a single piece of foam struck its wing. Starship, on the other hand, could lose parts of a fin or take hits during re-entry and still come back in one piece. This resilience reinforces one of the key takeaways from these tests. Starship isn't just powerful or ambitious, it's incredibly tough. When it comes to Starship's development, SpaceX has fully embraced an iterative design philosophy, prioritizing rapid construction and testing over spending years perfecting designs on paper. This build-fast, learn-faster approach has defined the program since day one. Over the years, the version naming has evolved significantly. The early prototypes started with Starhopper, 2019, then moved to the SN series, SN1 to SN20, 2019 to 2021, and later transitioned into Block 1, which represented the first full-stack orbital attempts, like Flight 1 in 2023. From there, Block 2 took over, covering flights 7 through 11, and now development is shifting toward Block 3 and Block 4. These blocks aren't simple number changes, they represent hardware evolution, with each generation building on the lessons of the last. However, SpaceX discovered a flaw in its Block 2 design strategy. It changed too many systems at once. This made it hard to identify exactly which updates caused specific failures during test flights. To fix that, the company is moving away from massive, all-at-once upgrades and instead breaking progress into smaller, more traceable steps. Enter Starship version 3, a transitional design meant to bridge version 2 and the more ambitious version 4. It's not just a minor tweak. Version 3 delivers major upgrades in performance, reusability, and scalability, all while keeping the architecture compatible with current facilities. Version 3 will feature all new Raptor 3 engines, a redesigned hot stage ring, an upgraded Booster 3 design. The Raptor 3 engine, now flight ready, addresses several core issues from earlier Raptor 2 models. Its performance gains are so critical that without them, Starship would essentially just be a more complex Falcon Heavy. Most of the focus for version 3 revolves around the booster. It will now use subcooled propellants, similar to Falcon 9, allowing for denser fuel and greater efficiency. This change alone boosts the vehicle's fuel capacity by 12% with only a 2% increase in height. Other key upgrades include larger liquid oxygen tanks, three oversized grid fins for improved tower catching capability, 
simplified pressurization systems, around 20% more thrust overall. Version 3 also fits comfortably within existing infrastructure. Its 81-meter booster height likely aligns with the Megabay's hook height, meaning SpaceX won't need the larger Gigabay to assemble it. This keeps operations lean and allows for a much earlier launch timeline. Starship version 4 represents SpaceX's next major leap, a far more ambitious design that pushes for maximum performance, though it faces formidable technical hurdles that will take time to overcome. The ultimate goal for version 4 is to deliver 200 tons to low Earth orbit, a crucial milestone if SpaceX wants to enable orbital refueling for Moon and Mars missions. Without this capacity, sustained lunar operations simply wouldn't be possible. Version 4 will feature significantly stretched stages and six vacuum-optimized Raptor engines, making it much taller than the current version 3. While version 3 stands at about 124.4 meters, 408 feet, version 4 is projected to reach around 142 meters, 466 feet. And according to Elon Musk, the total height could even exceed 150 meters once finalized. This dramatic increase in height is tied directly to the development of a new, lighter heat shield. The improved design allows SpaceX to save mass through thinner and lighter tiles, leveraging the higher temperature tolerance of stainless steel. Combined with Raptor engine upgrades, structural optimizations, and other refinements, these changes pave the way for the stretched Version 4 design. Version 4 is being built as a general-purpose heavy-lift vehicle, designed to handle everything from Mars cargo missions to orbital tanker operations. Its scalable architecture features 4,050 tons of propellant in the booster, 2,300 tons on the ship, a total of 42 Raptor engines, including additional vacuum-optimized Raptors, produce roughly 2,700 tons of upper stage thrust. The first flight of Starship version 4 is currently expected around 2027, marking a major milestone in SpaceX's long-term roadmap. In short, SpaceX's Starship development is a continuous evolution. Version 3 acts as the crucial bridge, integrating Raptor 3 engines and boosting performance while version 4 represents the ultimate goal, a 200-ton class super heavy lifter capable of enabling lunar and Martian operations.